Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, paid a visit to the general headquarters of the BDF. His Majesty was accompanied by the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Upon arrival, His Majesty was welcomed by the Minister of Defense, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, and the Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and a number of senior officers. His Majesty was briefed on the development plans of the BDF branches and installations. His Majesty expressed pride in the BDF and its loyal brave personnel who are the fortified shield of the nation and its civilizational march and unity. He also praised the remarkable competence of the BDF staff and commended their outstanding valor and courage in all the tasks entrusted to them, stressing that they are always up to their responsibility and merit trust and appreciation. His Majesty the King requested the senior officers to convey his greetings to all the BDF affiliates at various work sites. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Deputy Chief of the Naval Staff of India, Vice Admiral Sanjay Mahindru, and an accompanying delegation at Libya Palace. His Royal Highness welcomed the Vice Admiral's visit to Bahrain and highlighted the depth of the long-standing ties between Bahrain and India. He noted the importance of continuing to bolster joint cooperation and coordination across various fields. Regional and international issues of developments of common interest were also discussed. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal Malki, also attended the meeting. The National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa received the Pakistani Director General of the Joint Staff Lieutenant General Mohammed Wasim Ashraf and the accompanying delegation. The President praised the Bahraini-Pakistani relations that resulted in raising the levels of cooperation, exchanging experiences and implementing joint exercises between the National Guard and the Pakistani Armed Forces to enhance combat capabilities. The Director General expressed his appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed's interest in developing cooperation. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received Indian Deputy Chief of the Naval Staff Vice Admiral Sanjay Mahindra. His Highness praised the advanced bilateral Bahraini-Indian relations in all fields. The two parties reviewed ways of developing cooperation, especially in the defense sector. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, in the presence of the Vice President of GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the CEO of GSA, Dr. Abdul Rahman Askar. 
His Highness congratulated her on the Royal Trust, wishing her success in carrying out her duties. He directed to promote sports tourism and called for achieving it through the development of an action plan between GSA and the Ministry of Tourism. His Highness emphasized the importance of integrating efforts for cooperation and coordination in this field to increase sports programs and tournaments, host visiting teams, organize conferences, sports exhibitions, international matches, and all that would revitalize sports tourism. The Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his directives and affirmed the Ministry's support for His Highness's various initiatives. She noted the importance ro important role of the sports tourism in promoting tourism in Bahrain in line with the Tourism Strategic Plan 2022-2026. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the staff of the Athletes Heart Screening Clinic in the presence of the GSA Vice President, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, GSA CEO Dr. Abdurrahman Askar, CEO of Government Hospitals Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Lansari and members of the work team. His Highness was briefed on the national program for the mandatory periodic examination of athletes. His Highness directed that medical examinations are mandatory for all athletes, referees and technical staff and must be conducted before and after all national football leagues. He called on clubs to coordinate with GSA to conduct tests and to the clinic to ensure that the names of athletes are included in the list of participation in leagues and other sports activities. He stressed that taking care of the health of athletes is an essential element that integrates with the program programs and strategies of the sports sector in Bahrain. His Highness noted that this program is in line with the directors of His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to take care of athletes' health. His Highness praised the efforts made in developing the program by the clinic staff and wished them further success. The clinic staff expressed thanks and appreciation for the support and follow-up of His Highness, expressing aspiration that the program will achieve the desired goals. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communication Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa, chaired a workshop on government performance and digital transformation, which is held as part of the Future Aspirations workshops upon the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Minister affirmed the importance of developing the government work system to enhance the comprehensive development march led by His Majesty the King and meet the aspirations of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister within the framework of defining the mechanisms and priorities that constitute the future concept of government work and strengthens the efforts of Team Bahrain to develop the outcomes of government work to achieve national interest. The Cabinet Affairs Minister, Hamad bin Faisal al-Malki, reviewed the policies and initiatives that the coordinating meeting concluded on government performance and digital transformation, which includes five main policies and include 23 initiatives, which are improving the efficiency of the government workforce and sector, enhancing accountability and transparency, improving strategic planning, and following up on government performance, and promoting digital transformation in government procedures and services. General Sheikh Rashid affirmed that this workshop comes as a continuation of a series of workshops that were previously held to set the, and prioritize the aspirations of government program 2019-2022 and resulted in launching a package of pioneering projects and initiatives to achieve sustainable development goals. He stressed the importance of evaluating the performance of government employees, noting that honesty in performing duty is an attribute of loyalty and sincerity in work. The minister stated that the views of the participants in the workshop will be presented during the meeting of the Ministerial Committee for Information Technology and will be referred to the comprehensive workshop which will be held under the chairmanship of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Infrastructure Sheikh Khalid Abdullah Al Khalifa. He stressed that the development of government performance is a continuous process and is always subject to review to ensure the sustainability of development and he highlighted Bahrain's keenness on laying a solid foundation for development with the sovereignty of the system to facilitate every national effort that proceeds towards more development in government service to achieve the aspirations of the people of the country. The Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the organizers of the workshop, stressing the need to adopt initiatives that ensure benefiting from government programs and plans to enhance development in the Kingdom. 
The Minister of Labor, Jamil Ahmedan, visited a number of work sites to see the extent to which private sector establishments are committed to implementing Ministry Resolution 3 of 2013 regarding the ban on working under sunlight and in open places from 12 to 4 p.m. He with a number of supervisors and was briefed on the measures taken by their com companies and institutions to ensure full compliance with the ban in order to secure a healthy and safe working environment for workers and reduce the risk of infection, injuries, heat stress or heat strokes. The minister praised the commitment of companies and institutions to implement this decision, stressing that it is an important legislation that involves humanitarian dimensions. The Ministry of Labor has carried out 6,608 inspection visits since the decision came into force and only 16 violations have been detected. The Ministry of Industry and Commerce held an open meeting under the patronage of the Minister Zaid Zayani and a number of officials in order to review the most prominent developments in the industrial sector. More in this report. To continue building on the success and growth achieved over the past years in the industrial sector, today the most prominent developments in the industrial sector and the Kingdom of Bahrain's accession to the Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development were reviewed through a press conference that brought together a group of business figures and specialists in this sector. The Integrated Industrial Partnership Initiative, which was recently signed in partnership with the UAE, Jordan and Egypt, aims to develop industries capable of competing globally, in addition to contributing to the development of manufacturing sectors to ensure the flexibility of supply chains, enhancing the economic position and status of the Kingdom of Bahrain globally. This cooperation came in implementation of the visions and aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to achieve comprehensive economic development and create more quality opportunities for citizens, which is one of the promising sectors that the Kingdom of Bahrain seeks to develop within the Economic Recovery Plan and through an integrated and ambitious strategy. Under the patronage of the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak bin Dana, the Supreme Council for the Environment organized a closing ceremony for the Climate Innovation Initiative. The minister praised the distinguished initiatives presented in the event and the framework of achieving sustainable development goals and limiting the effects of climate change. Acting Director of the Environmental Communication and Awareness Department at the SCE, Amna al -Ramihi, delivered a speech in which she affirmed the firm belief that science and innovation are the basis for launching projects and programs to achieve the goals of the comprehensive development process. The minister then honored the winning teams in the Climate Innovation Initiative competition. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Ahmedan, paid an inspection visit to the Communications Center of the Electricity and Water Authority in the presence of the Chairman of the Authority, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, and with the participation of a number of officials, and the visit aims to reviewing the work progress in the center and how to deal and respond to citizens' calls and requests and the quality of the services provided. The Minister was briefed on the mechanisms for registering and tracking citizens' and subscribers' requests and needs through various communication channels. He affirmed keenness to develop and improve the quality of services provided to citizens and subscribers with the aim of enhancing confidence in government services. The minister praised the efforts of the center's workers and said that investing in developing the human element has a direct impact on the quality of government services provided to citizens and subscribers. With the support of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and with the organization of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs in cooperation with Tim Keen, the 11th edition of Youth City 2030 was launched. More in this report. Various training programs that meet the requirements of the labor market are provided in Youth City 2030 that train young people through various programs with new specializations offered by the Youth City in its 11th edition. These programs offered by the city greatly contribute to refining the youth's personalities and providing them with new information and diverse experiences in various fields. As you know, this is the 11th edition of the, the city. Uh, we mainly focus on enabling and empowering and developing the, youth, uh, the youths here in uh, the city in various fields such as art, leadership, media, science, uh, technology and uh, if you can uh, see also in sports. 
The city offers 2,400 training opportunities that simulate the requirements of the labor market and help its participants acquire basic skills for it. The cooperation between the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs and Temkin in organizing the Youth City 2030 stems from the commitment of both sides to organize initiatives that provide training opportunities for them to make them the best choice in the labor market. The Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghaid, met with the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adel Assoumi. Abul Ghaid praised the important role that His Majesty the King plays in supporting Arab cases, joint Arab action and various fields, and enhancing Arab cooperation. He expressed his thanks and appreciation for Bahrain's balanced policy, its Arab nation defense, and Bahrain's achievements in all fields. Al Assoumi affirmed the importance of the Arab League and the Arab Parliament's cooperation to support Arab cases and to enhance the process of Arab joint action, especially in light of the challenges that the region is facing. The Meteorological Directorate at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications stated that the expected weather in Bahrain will be unstable with a chance of rain that may be thundery at times. Winds will generally be easterly from 7 to 12 knots, reaching 15 to 20 knots, with gusts of up to 35 knots at times. The Meteorological Directorate calls on citizens and residents to exercise caution, especially with the movement of thunderstorms towards the kingdom. The French presidency announced that President Emmanuel Macron will receive His Royal Highness the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, at the Alize Palace. The Crown Prince will discuss relations between the two countries and ways to enhance cooperation in various fields. He will also discuss issues of common interest with the French leadership. The Saudi Crown Prince's visit follows Macron's visit to Jeddah last December. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense of Saudi Arabia, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. And Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama, held an expanded meeting in the Greek capital Athens. During the meeting, relations of friendship and mutual respect between the two countries were reviewed. The meeting dealt with ways to consolidate the economic partnership between the two countries and ways to enhance the cooperation in all fields. The Albanian Prime Minister expressed his deep thanks and appreciation for Saudi Arabia's decision to provide support for Albania with an amount of $50 million and also for conducting investments in Albania worth $200 to $300 million. Thank you.